Now Henry Jones and a pretty little queen Took a ride one day in his big limousine The car kicked dead and the engine wouldn't crank There wasn't any gas in the gasoline tank You can smash up the top, you can smash up the seat You can twist it out of shape till both ends meet Smash up the body and rip out a gear Smash up the front and Smash up the rear. Smash up the fender and rip off the tires. Smash up the lamps and cut out the wires. Throw in the clutch and then forget the juice. And the little old Ford will go to beat the juice. And the little old Ford is ramble right along. And the little old Ford is ramble right along. Now cut that out, you naughty tease. To the left hand driver and the right hand squeeze. horseless carriage, a bumpy, clunky luxury that few people could afford. These laboriously handmade vehicles were generally no more accessible than the dirt roads they drove on until Henry Ford had a better idea. Ford wanted to produce an automobile that any man with a respectable job could afford. But building one car at a time was an expensive operation. Why not bring costs down by building several cars all at once? The assembly line was born. Henry Ford was constantly looking for ways to get the cost of production down and the volume of production up. And he found that if he put, say, the transmission assembly on a moving line where someone would assemble one part and then just shove it down the line to the next person, that he could vastly increase the production. The 1908 Model T was an instant hit, but demand outstripped supply. So Ford automated the assembly line, dramatically reducing the time it took to produce one car from 12 hours in 1908 to an hour and a half in 1913, and the price dropped from $850 to $550. It was the first car that was really widely available to truly large numbers of people. The price was driven down so low that it, it became a ubiquitous car. It was immensely capable. It could go anywhere. It could be adapted to a lot of different uh, uses. Paved streets wouldn't come until years later, but Ford ingeniously built the Model T to tackle even the most challenging terrain. In many ways, the Model T, the requirements that the Model T had to meet are similar to the requirements that sport utility vehicles have to meet today. Uh, they had to operate on over very bad roads, uh, badly rutted roads in mud and in dust, just because the, the conditions were, were really awful. The Model T quickly became the car of choice. In its first year, 1908, Ford produced a total of 14,000 tin Lizzie's in three color choices, red, green, and gray. Ten years later, more than three million rolled off the assembly line. The drivers used a, a set of pedals to go forward, to go in reverse, and so it was a very easy car to drive compared to a lot of other cars. So all these things combined to help make the car uh, really uh, the, the right vehicle for its time. Henry Ford thought of everything. In the early days, customers with a little cash to spare could choose luxury options like headlights or a windshield. In 1913, he found a black paint that dried faster. So to speed up the assembly line, he declared that the Model T would now come in only one color, basic black. The Model T is the only truly revolutionary car that's ever been invented and perhaps ever will be invented. Not only did it, quote, put the world on wheels, it changed the nature of work. It changed, in many ways, the nature of the way we manufacture things. Its impact goes beyond the automobile industry. 